Barnabas and Paul discovered that there was some entity that was in the company of this Roman official. Because when you read it in the Bible, it says that he was with the man. And that word is soon in the Greek, which means he was in his company. It's a close relationship. Now the Bible tells us who that man was. That is this man that was with this Roman official. The Bible calls him, number one, a sorcerer. Number two, a false prophet. Number three, a Jew. Number four, Bar Jesus is his name. Remember what I just said. He's called a sorcerer. He's called a false prophet. He is called a Jew. He is called Bar Jesus. Now let me analyze this for you. You see, the word sorcerer comes from the Greek word magos, which means a magician. So a better translation would be that this man is a magician, but he carries a Bible around with him and calls himself a prophet, that he is a servant of Almighty God. So the Bible tells us that he is not, that he is a false prophet. He is a false prophet. Pseudo prophetess is the Greek phrase. He is a false prophet, a magician who carries the Bible around, who preaches who teaches and claims to be an inspired speaker of the Lord. Did you see that? Then the Bible says he's a Jew because he has to follow the pattern of Jesus. Jesus is a Jew. Jesus is connected to the Jewish nation. So he pretends to follow that pattern as a Jew and then calls himself Bar Jesus, which means son of Jesus. Now, in the spirit realm, when you say that you are the son of somebody, it doesn't mean that there's some biological procreation that has occurred. It means that you are equal with that person. The Jews crucified Jesus because he claimed to be the son of God. And they said to him that if you say that you are the son of God, you make yourself equal with God. And that is blasphemy. And so they crucified him. So when this man calls himself by Jesus, son of Jesus, he's claiming equality with Jesus. He's saying he's another Jesus. Now you get the point. That's the pattern. He's a magician who pretends to be a prophet. He's connected to the Jews, to the nation of Israel. And he calls himself another Jesus. That's the pattern that Joshua has. He's a magician, a sorcerer and calls himself a prophet. Notice, he doesn't call himself an apostle. He doesn't call himself a teacher. He doesn't call himself a pastor. Because if he calls himself by any other name outside of a prophet, he does not fulfill the pattern. So he must stick with that <laughs> appellation. He must call himself prophet so, so, and so. So that's why he stuck with that word, that name, that terminology. That appellation, because it is a prophetic assignment appellation. That's why he had to call himself prophet. So he's a magician who claims to be a prophet, but he's a false prophet. And calls himself Joshua to identify with the nation of Israel. And calls himself another Jesus. That's what he believes, that he's another Jesus. So he's by Jesus. The same as Jesus, equal with Jesus. That is the pattern that he has in scripture. And that is the pattern he has followed because if he didn't have that pattern, he didn't follow that pattern, then power that is necessary for him to carry out whatever assignment that Satan gives to him would not be engendered. Are you still here? Then he must follow the pattern of the Lord Jesus Christ in his ministry. Where is that found? Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all those that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. That's the pattern he has to follow in his ministry. See? So he's, he's another Jesus. And notice what the Bible says. How Jesus went about. So he's proactive in doing good. How Jesus of Nazareth went about doing good after he had been anointed. Now, the word good 
comes from the Greek word euegetes. A better translation would be philanthropy. He was philanthropic. The word philanthropy, again, derives from the Greek. The first part, phil, comes from the word phileo, and the word anthropy comes from the word anthropos, which is mankind. Phileo means love, love of mankind. A limousinary propensity. A giver. So, his modus operandi would be that he must demonstrate to people a certain philanthropic disposition because he must follow the pattern of Jesus. That is why he targeted several people within the society. He had people who were building his image, his spin doctors, who would look into our society, the community. If anybody had a problem or he was prominent or Joshua could use that person to authenticate the veracity of his claims, he would invite that person and be generous towards them. If you listen to the testimony of the people who met him, oh, Joshua did this for me. He gave me money. Joshua gave me money. He gave me money. It was always about something he gave because he must follow that pattern of philanthropy. Why? Because Satan imitates God. It is written, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. So he must follow that pattern of philanthropy. Some of you who met him, you don't understand what I'm saying. He was always willing to help you somehow, somehow. Particularly, some kind of pecuniary blessing that he gave to you. So that would induce you to support him as a good man. Are you still here? Not only that, notice what the Bible says. How Jesus of Nazareth went about doing good and healing. So there must be healing in his ministry. Now notice what, notice the construction. He went about doing good and healing those that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So the healing ministry must have a proclivity or an inclination towards deliverance. See? So when you look at the, the, the ministry of Joshua, he has, he has a ministry that involves healing but with, a, with special emphasis on deliverance because he has to pattern it, you know, after what the Bible says, about the modus operandi of the Lord Jesus. Are you still here? I hope you're following these things that I'm saying. Now, once you understand that, you will see the deception in what he did.